Guitar Practice Session 9-11-2024. These are just going to basically be sloppy practice sessions where I'm just going to be practicing, covering whatever I think I need to be working on at any given day, hoping that kind of logging them out will give me a log, also help me to have kind of more of a routine and being able to try to put things into words in like a presentation format makes it a little bit more easy for me to uh, organize my thoughts, which later possibly I can trim down and put into a course. It also might be useful uh, for other people. I, I, I think it would be good to try to try to like present things as a useful tool. So if you want to use like these resources, like this Excel worksheet and do whatever you want to do with it, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. I'll try to provide it and you can you know do whatever you want to do if that would be useful with that and also possibly if there's any feedback in terms of how i can do things better or what other people are doing in similar kind of situations that would be useful as well so this time i'm kind of thinking over one thing i'm looking at these days is basically my posture kind of comparing and contrasting a more classical type of posture of holding the guitar versus more of a, a I guess a blues a jazz or country having the guitar on the right leg or uh, the left leg and I'm mainly looking into that because my back's been hurting uh, number one and number two I've been trying to reach further across the guitar than like in the five frets and that seems to be a little bit easier if I switch from my normal stance which has been on the right leg more of a, a I guess a blues or jazz or rock style or whatever to having it on the other leg because then your hand so that's what I'm one thing I'm kind of looking into and then I go into just my practicing of my intervals I'm trying to put a worksheet together so I can have a routine of basically uh, practicing my intervals and being able to kind of get as much in as I can in a short time frame so I'm currently working on what I would call position one or the g-shape position uh, if you're looking at it from the cage system or I could call it an aeolian position absolute mode number six position so I'm trying to come up with different words for that and then I I'm also going to go through the intervals here compare it to like the shape as though I was working at the top looking at the phrygian mode within shape number one so that's gonna and then i'll and i'm gonna work it downwards backwards and try to look at the shapes of the guitar and repeat them so i can kind of see the shape i can i can know the intervals know the actual notes of the intervals be able to count up and back the intervals and kind of know the inverse of the intervals this time on the phrygian as opposed to yesterday which i was on the dorian and then i kind of just mess around playing on the guitar just sloppy playing i haven't edited it uh, and I was going to add like the keys that I was in over here, but I think I just played like I was messing around just in A minor, which is my normal, uh, that's my most well-known uh, key. And then I think I was messing around in G uh, minor, doing similar stuff uh, in G minor. And then I was, and then... I was doing a little, trying to do that little kind of Spanish-y thing, which is basically an A minor, but it has a, a major E in it because that leads back to the A. And then I was messing a little bit in, uh, I think I was messing a little bit in G major. Uh, so I was going to put the keys on the screen, but I, I don't really feel like I have like time to do that. So I was, that's all, that's it for that. So that's basically what I'm looking at. So my idea is that I'm, I'm, I'll just do the practice session and then try to recap it afterwards and give you some idea of what I was doing on the intro. <laughs> the first thing I want to kind of think about today is basically the holding of the guitar, which I've been experimenting with for a couple different reasons. Once my back's been hurting a little bit, so I've been looking up what's the best position to hold the guitar in that would be easiest on the back. And then two, I also have been looking into reaching up further than just basically the four frets. So in other words, usually we can reach all the notes that we need to uh, within basically a four to five fret span. But sometimes you want to be reaching out beyond that because it gives you just a different sound. So like it seems to me like the, the bluesies and jazzy kind of people often are reaching up in this area. 
And to me, that might be easier to do if I kind of shift the way I'm holding the guitar. So uh, generally, I'm just thinking in my own mind, like what are the pros and cons of holding the guitar different ways? And then, you know, how do I want to basically practice mainly going forward? Now, the two ways to hold any guitar, but clearly I'm working with a mainly using a, a large uh, acoustic guitar. But I've been playing like this, which is, of course, like a traditional, I would say, you know, blues way or, or jazzy way or country way, which, which is over the right leg, having it elevated a bit and then playing in this format, which is a great way to play because you can see this side of the neck pretty clearly. This side of the neck is a little bit closer to me uh, when I play this way, which is kind of uh, nice. But it's harder to see, of course, this side of the neck because you're kind of jammed in, your elbows jammed in a little bit on this side of the neck. So I think it works good for the open chords. It actually tends to lean the guitar this way. It's a little harder to lean the guitar back and see what you're doing up here, which is a little bit more uh, of a disadvantage. You have a good reach within four to five frets without a problem. But if I'm stretching beyond that, that's when this seems to become more of a problem. So if you're reaching on beyond like our four to five fret shapes here, uh, which you might do with like a blue shuffle pattern kind of thing. All right, so that's kind of a reach to do something like that. Then, then I'm thinking it might be better to do a different, to hold it the more classical uh, type of way. The other thing is with this way of holding it, you can kind of stick your thumb out over the top and everybody has these preferences it looks to me like on the thumb thing because classical guitar says you have you should have the thumb in the back right behind and uh and i think that would be true for getting your fingers down as much on the guitar as you can but sometimes i kind of want to mute some of the strings here especially if i'm playing if i'm strumming so when i'm using a pick type of playing then oftentimes i want to mute this strings in different ways. I think if you're playing a finger style, that might not be as important because you can mute the strings with the finger and oftentimes you're coming up from below instead of the pick coming from the top, in which case you're going to hit the strings above it, which you can mute a lot of the times uh, if you have your thumb hanging over the top. So I kind of like having my thumb hang over the top, which is easier to do in this position than when you're up here. So if I'm strumming like this, I just want the A string to ring out. You know, I could do something like that and I can kind of mute the low E pretty easy and I can even mute down to the to the A if I was playing like a like a D down here and I wanted to kind of mute the top strings so I'm muting these two so I can strum more sloppily <laughs> so I kind of like the thumb hanging over and some people actually sometimes you can actually fret with the thumb so a lot of it seems to me a lot of bluesy and jazzy people actually use that thumb effectively even though traditionally it's supposed to be behind the neck so that's some pros and cons of that as far as I can tell uh, but uh, the people think people say that your shoulders high this way and that means your your spine is going to be a little bit more twisted when especially when you're crouching over because the neck is a little bit lower this way as well and so I think those are some of the cons and they also say well if you're if you put a strap on and you stand up then you're usually going to have the guitar like this with the strap unless you're kind of hanging it low like rock style but most of the time with a strap you're going to want it up here a lot of the time and uh and so if you and so you might want to practice that way sitting down that's the other argument that i've heard for holding you know more of the classical kind of style uh rather than this way so i've been experimenting with that i've been like putting it here which is a little bit more secure and it does kind of make the shoulders, you think, a little tighter. It puts the neck further out, so it's a little bit harder to play the open strings because they're further out here. But when I'm reaching, especially when I'm reaching up in this area or maybe past this area, then it's a lot easier to reach. And that bluesy thing, you know, if I'm reaching down here to like the flat seven or whatever, I can it might be a little bit easier for to make those reaches longer reaches tends to have my thumb behind the neck more so i don't get as much i can't reach over the top as much which you know you might want to do sometimes when you're muting things and when you, my picking hand is a little bit 
more diagonal, right, which may or may not be a problem. I'm also going to be picking maybe more towards the base where the bridge is uh, down here. But I've been practicing this way for a while just to kind of test it out. I'm almost thinking if it would be interesting to play this way or to play like this way down here and then like rotate up when you get up here <laughs> and you know you rotate it this way so that you can see more of the more of the fretboard on this side but obviously that would be somewhat not <laughs> you know you're moving around that's going to add complications but it'd still be kind of cool if you're just playing around with it so you kind of move it from here to here depending on where you're on the guitars i can move my footstool i just put a I just put a, some books down there so it's not too difficult to do that. But anyways, and then I was looking at some people that have these different styles and say, well, what do they, what do they do? Like I listen to this lady all the time, uh, Gabriella, because she just plays mainly fairly popular stuff, but kind of behind, like it's not really fast tempo, so it's perfect for listening to when I'm working. And so she's great, but she's, and she plays, it looks like, more of a like the classic blues or jazzy style cross-legged to raise the leg up a little bit here. And uh, she plays some, she can play very difficult things, but she mainly plays like rock and roll and she's got the finger style. So so maybe that, and, and obviously she's got like, she's not, I would assume she has basically normal style, beautiful women hands, which are, should be, you know, I think slightly smaller than mine, so I can't really use an excuse that my hands are not big enough, I would think, if she can uh, do the reaches on one leg. But maybe she's not reaching quite as high uh, because she because she's doing rock and roll style, which kind of fits uh, into one area, although she's done some bluesy stuff too. So, But in any case, she's got that jazzy thing, and I really like her playlists don't have any... She doesn't like talk or advertise after the song. So that's again, her playlist I think is great just for background music when you're working. And then I was looking at this guy, which is Luca. And he's another normal, like just a normal kind of guitar, but he more of a, I'm guessing that he kind of learned from a classical style. And when he stands up, he puts his guitar up like this which would be more of a classical way but I have seen that when he sits down he sometimes does put it on on the other leg so th which is kind of weird because because that does mean that the guitar seems to be in different positions when he's standing or when he's sitting uh, right because it's kind of up here when he's standing and down there when he's sitting which means that maybe it does, maybe you could switch it around and it's not that big of a deal because again this guy's stuff is He's also pretty nice to listen to on background music, although it's a bit of high, higher tempo. And then I was looking at this guy, which is which he do, uses a normal you know guitar, and he definitely looks like a he would like he learned guitar classically as a younger guy. It seems to me, and he tends to play all the time, whether standing or sitting, I believe, and he really has the guitar up up here, which. And he doesn't look like a big guy to me. So that means, again, I don't think his hands are like monster giant hands, but he's still able to reach. And he plays a lot of like classical stuff. So I think he has to reach up. And that might be easier to do if you got your guitar up here, I'm thinking. And then the other one I've been listening to is Anna for classical. Anna, I, I can't say it, Vidovic, Vidovic. She's, and again, she looks like she's a, got pretty normal style hands. She's got a smaller guitar with a classical guitar, but she does bigger reaches with the classical stuff as she's trying to convert that, I guess, to the guitar. And she's still able to reach, but of course she's using the classical stance. So I don't know, I'm kind of going back and forth between these two. Uh, I also was thinking about making a back helping my back with like a sitting on this cushion, which I heard someone try to do, but then I ordered it and that my neighbor stole uh, my cushion. So the dang neighbors, so crooked neighbors probably need the back straightening cushion more than I do, but whatever, I'm going to get another, I'm going to get another one if that, so let me know if anyone, if that one sounds good. I'm, 
I just gotta order it and get it, s see if I can sneak it past the blockade over here. It's, but yeah, and so anyways, I, I don't know what Amazon, so they're supposed to put it in a lock box. We have a lock box. It says in the instructions, you know, to put it in the lock box and they put it at the, I, I think that, I think Amazon's in on the, in on it with the pirates. Jeff, Jeff Bezos is out there like saying, saying, yeah, here we go. We're delivering the $16 pillow. Make sure you're on the lookout to pick that up. And then they probably, and then they probably take it and sell it back to Amazon. I know how, I know how this is going. I tell, I tell my neighbors to take a hike and they stole my shoes and started stomping around in my backyard. Sons of whatever. Any case. So that's the first thing I've been working on here. And, <laughs> and so let's see. The other thing I'm thinking about is, so now I'm just going to go back and see. I'm on the Phrygian now. So I'm thinking Phrygian mode. I'm trying to hold it basically this way. I'll try to basically orientate the guitar so that you can just see it from left to right like I normally do. Here's my worksheet, the low or heavy string on top. And I'm now working once again in my normal, what I would call position one here. And I'm calling it position one because that's just a generic name for that rock and roll position that a lot of people call it. I can also call it a G-shaped position from the caged shape because if I look at the related Ionian mode, then that would be C and I'd play a G shape, which would be like this G shape. So you can name the shape after that if you so choose. I can also call it an Aeolian shape or minor mode shape, which I'm also calling mode number six shape. And that would only count if you label it by where you're starting. Because if I started at the top here, then it would be basically a minor mode. So that's the idea uh, on those. All right, so now I'm going to be saying, but now I want to play in Phrygian. So if I played from here, that would be a minor mode. I want to play in Phrygian. So then the question is, well, if I know this is my position one G-shaped pentatonic position, how do I get to the, the Phrygian? Well, I know that the Phrygian is absolute mode number three or the third of the related major and the Aeolian mode is absolute mode number six or the sixth of the related major. So if I start at the sixth here and I just count up my my positions till I get to the three, then I should do it. So I have to go around the horn to do that because if I'm at six, I go seven, six, seven, eight, or one, and then one, uh, two, three. And so that's gonna be the third. So that means my Phrygian starts here. You can also think, well, where is my related major? Because the major is usually what we in Western music think of as our kind of our key. So if I'm at the sixth tier, how do I get back to the major? Six, seven, eight. So there's my eight. And now I'm looking at the Phrygian, and I know the Phrygian is the third. It starts at the third of the related major. So this would be one, two, three, and there's going to be uh, my E. So that's a couple of different ways I can kind of get there. And then if I'm on this E and I start uh, the Phrygian, I can start to think about, I can also think about it, where does it start by shape? And I could say, okay, where, where are my root notes on the Phrygian? So I'm thinking about my, my shapes as though you've got the, the double stop box shape. You've got the two note per string shape. I'll just highlight it this way. And then you got the box double stop. Where does the Phrygian lie? It lies right here. Now, sometimes I try to make a little story about it uh, because that might help. This is like a little house right here, this box. And we know that the master key, the master bedroom is up here with the C. So in this box, the C is the one we often think as the, the master one. And then you've got the Dorian, uh, which is the, or the Phrygian, which is a minor mode which is on the bottom floor left of, uh, of the related major. So it's gonna be down here. So if I recognize this box, this box is also over here, although it's shifted up because of the shift in the tuning or the step up the curve, it's always at the bottom left of the box. That's where you start. So if you find the box, your Phrygian is gonna be at the bottom left of the box. That's where it starts. 
So it's the bottom left of this box, bottom left of this box, but it's shifted up. Okay. And so then I could say, well, my roots are here and I can find my other one is going to be over here. I can see that. And then if I was to basically uh, just look at the shape and move up the shape, I'm starting at the bottom of what I would call the double stop box or square. And then it goes boom and then it goes boom and now i'm at the two note per string i'm going to call that the meat of the hamburger because that's the shape that's the same when i start looking at it in terms of pentatonic it goes boom boom so i call that the meat of the hamburger two note per string that naturally goes back if there's no kink in the tuning which there's not because we're not there yet to what i would call the square double stop the square is shifted though because of the kink in the tuning so we're at the top of it boom 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 and then we go to the bottom of what i call the square double stop and we end it right there boom so if i was to count that out then we're going through the eight notes starting here so we're going to say one two three four five six seven eight now note that that shape i also want to see that that shape what if i started thinking of that shape as though it was on the top string so the E on the top string would be the open E, or you can also see it up here on the 12th fret, which is sometimes easier to see because then I'm actually fingering it over here as opposed to having the open strings, which means we have a different kind of fingering position. Now if now here, if I put the, 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 it this way, then I would call that basically uh, position number four, or you could call it the Phrygian position because if you started from the top, you'd basically be playing in Phrygian, but we're really mirroring this position, which because we're starting on this note. So if I mirror that up and play it on the top string, what position would that be? That would in essence be uh, position number three. So we'd basically be in uh, position number, what I would call position number three, you might call it a D-shaped position, because if I look at the related C major, then you'd be playing like a D-shape down here, uh, you can also call it a uh, position, what, what is this position? This was the Dorian position, because if I started from the top and played it from here, shape number three, would you be playing a Dorian? But if I play it from here, the second note, then I'd be playing a Phrygian. So if I mirrored this and say, what if I had that pattern founded on the top string, then I'm gonna end up uh, with the same pattern is the general idea. I can always kind of imagine if I can see these patterns on the top string, kind of moving them down and then adjusting for the kink in the tuning. So it'd be going boom, boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, would be the idea. And then we have that same idea here, except it got shifted up because of the kink of the kink in the tuning. Okay, so now let's just do the, uh, the, the intervals. The other thing just to note on the intervals, where's the funny note? This is a minor mode, so it should conform to the minor intervals, uh, which has the minor intervals all usually have a major second. This one has the minor second. So the major second is kind of weird because you'd think it'd be minor because everything else is minor in a minor mode typically or the minor scale, but the second is usually major and this time it's minor. So that means, and that's easy to remember on the Phrygian because, because it's got, that's a very distinctive second. The second step is, is the weird one, right? So now you have that. It gives a little bit more tension uh, sounding. So that's that. Okay, so now let's just count up the intervals. So if I go from the one of the Phrygian to the two of the Phrygian, I know the second of the Phrygian is a minor second. So I would call it a one note away minor second. Sounds like that. Uh, we know that the inverse of a one note away minor second would be 12 minus one, which would be an 11 note away major seventh. So now we have a minor, the inverse of a minor is usually a major. So if I went from the, the, the E to the D, that would be a one note away minor second. If I went from F to E, that would be a uh, 11 note away major seven. How do I know that's 11 notes away? Because I can only see one note in between because if I count it up this way, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11. So we're thinking of it as, in essence, a circle uh, when we think of it. So I count, okay, so that's the idea. So then I'm going to go, and I, and so that was the second. I also know that the second of the Phrygian is, because, b because the Phrygian is the third mode, it's two steps down from the Ionian or major scale. Therefore, the second of the Phrygian, I can just always add two to it. So I'm going to say two plus two is four. It's the fourth mode, or in other words, it would be the fourth of its related major scale. I'm using the fourth as an absolute, even though it's relative to the key of C major, of the relative to the key of, of the major, right? The fourth is the Lydian, and it's a major mode. So F would be the Lydian uh, mode of it, of it. Okay. So then if I go to the next one, I'm going to go, all right, now I'm on the third. So now I'm on the third. So I'm going to go boom, boom. Oh, is that right? And so that's the, 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 th wait a sec, that's not right. What am I doing? I was on the F. So the third of a Phrygian, because it's a, a minor mode, I need to pull this up, is a minor third. That's defining it as a minor mode. That's what it means to be a minor mode. It has a three note away minor third. The inver And I can see that because I can count this up from here to here is five notes because there's always five notes between strings except for the kink and the tuning. Five, four, three. Three note away minor third. The inverse would be 12 minus three, which would be nine. So that would be a nine note away and nine notes away would be a major six. So if I go from the E to the G, that shape is a three note away minor third. If I went from the G to the E and I'm measuring and thinking of that as my root, that would be a nine note away major sixth. I also know that the third of the Phrygian is three plus two or the fifth in absolute terms mode, which is the Mixolydian mode which is the uh, a major mode, and the fifth mode would be it would be the fifth of the relative major scale, or Ionian scale. Okay, so then I'm going to go to the fourth and say, what if we went to the fourth? We go to the fourth here. That's going to be the uh, I know that the fourth of a Phrygian is going to be a five note away perfect fourth. <laughs> I can see it's five note away because if I just go from here to here, that's five notes going one string down unless they're, let's write the kink of the tuning. And I know that the inverse of that would be then 12 minus five, uh, which would be seven. So if I go from the E to the A, that's a five note away perfect fourth. If I started at the A to the E, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth, noting that the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth are inverses of each other. Then I'm going to go to, and I also know that the fourth of the Phrygian is uh, four plus two, because I can always just add two, and that's going to give me four, five, six, and that's going to be the absolute mode of Aeolian with relation to its, you know, the Dorian. And it's, of course, the minor mode. That's the, ma that's the core minor mode, the major minor mode, the core minor mode. All right, let's go to the seven. Uh, or the fifth. I'm going to the fifth here. So now we're on the fifth. And so it, I'm here, here. And that's a standard kind of fifth because we're not on the kink of the tuning yet. So that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. I can count that out by saying... If I start here, 5, 10, 15, 14, oh, wait a sec, 5, 10, 9, 8, 7. So 7 note away, perfect fifth. And the inverse of that would be 12 minus 7, uh, which would be 5. That would be a 5 note away, perfect fourth. So if I go from the E to the B, I'm trying to get this in my ear to E to the B. That's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. But if I went from the B to the E, that could be measured as a five note away uh, perfect fourth. Then let's go to the sixth. The sixth here we know for the Phrygian scale is a minor sixth as it's a proper sixth because it's minor and we're in a minor mode. 
So we have the sixth is going to be here. It's a minor sixth and it's an eight note away minor sixth. 12, the inverse of that would be, and I can see that by the way, by saying this is five, 10, nine, eight. So it's eight notes away, minor six. The inverse would be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 minus eight would be four. So that would be a four note away major third. So if I go from the E to the C, that shape is a eight note away minor uh, sixth. If I went from the C to the E, that would be a four note away major third. All right, and then let's go to the seven. So now I'm gonna go to the seven and that's gonna be, I also know by the way that the, the sixth plus two, six, seven, eight, and then eight minus seven is one because there's only seven modes, gets us back to Ionian mode, which is the major mode, which would be the C. And then if I go to the seventh, we can say boom boom now we're on this one doo, 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 doo. and we're in a minor we're in a minor seven ten note away minor seventh that's the shape for a ten note away minor seventh when there's no kink in the tuning involved and so that makes sense the inverse of that i could see that by saying ten five ten and then i can say that the inverse of that would be 12 minus 10 which would be two so if i played it this way from the e of the d that's a 12 note away minor seven. If I went from the D to the E, that's gonna be a two note away major second. All right, and then that brings me back to uh, the 12 note away octave. So that's one octave. All right, now let's go the other way and say, what if I started at this E and measured everything from there? So I can see I'm starting at, at what I would call the du, 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 the the bottom of the square double stop because i'm always on the bottom left but it's been shifted because of this kink uh in the tuning and then i'm going up to the top of what i would call the square double stop shape so it's going to go du, 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 and then i'm going to go to what i call the two note per string hamburger shape these shapes are always the same that's why i'm looking at them like this and then i'm going to the bottom of what I call the double stop square shape, which would be a uh, boom, boom. So there we have that. That's going backwards. Now, before I get into that, let me just think about it in terms of holes and half steps, just to look at where the half steps are. It's like, okay, where are the half steps in the Phrygian mode? So if I went, I go from the first of the Phrygian to the second of the Phrygian, that's the half step. <laughs> So that's the distinct half step right there, remembering that the half steps are always in the square. So because I'm starting at the bottom of the square, I'm not gonna get back to the top of the square until there's always two notes in between when you start at the bottom. So it's gonna go one, two, the two to the three is gonna be a, a whole step. The three to the four is gonna be a whole step. And then the four to the five is a whole step. And remember that pinky to pointer represents a whole step. And then uh, the five to the six, that's where you've got that half step. Six to the seven is a whole step. And then seven to eight is a whole step, which is, looks tighter in here, not pinky to pointer because of the kink in the tuning. So the half steps are between the uh, one, two, and then three, four, five, six. So one, two, five, six are where you got the half steps on the Phrygian. All right, let's go back to where we're going backwards. Now I'm gonna measure the, the this note. I'm on what I would call, uh, you can call this like the eighth if I was to count this backwards and start here, calling that the eight. We're gonna say eight, which is equivalent to one, eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, one. So that's gonna be our uh, notes and then we're, we can count it back this way, saying, okay, let's go from the eight back to the seven. So now I'm going from eight to seven, eight or one back to the seven. I, I'm on this one and I know that the seventh, uh, because it's a Phrygian, I know it's a 10 note away minor seventh. How can I prove that to myself? Well, I could count it up uh, to, to, get, to, to get there, but it's easier to look at the distance between the two 
which is if I counted from here down, it would be five, uh, four, three. So that would be three notes away. So that would be a three note away minor third. The inverse of that would be 12 minus three or, uh, wait a sec, hold on, that's not right because of the kink in the tuning. It'd be here to here would be five notes away because of the kink in the tuning. And then we're gonna say that'd be uh, five, four, three, uh, two would give me two. So it's two notes away and 12 minus two is 10. That gives me my 10 note away minor seven. So 10 note away minor uh, seven. So if I went from the bottom to the top, which is not normally the way we count it, but sometimes you're going to be thinking of it that way. And if you think of it as a circle, then just the tones, not the octaves, that would be just a, what did, what did I say? 10 note away minor seven. But if I go the other way from the D to the E, that's the inverse. That's a two note away major second. All right, let's go from the seventh to the sixth seventh to the sixth and so that's going to be i know in the phrygian the sixth because it's a minor mode is an eight note away uh minor six so if i look at it from here uh it's an eight note away minor six and normally that looks like if i was counting from the bottom to the top it looks like it would be a a perfect fifth and from the top to the bottom a perfect fourth but because of the kink of the tuning, it's been it's been shifted up. So that's why when I count from the bottom to the top, it's now a minor six. Because if I counted from this string to this string, that would be five note. That would be uh, from this string to this string would be five notes away, and this would be four notes away. Twelve minus four uh, would be eight, and that's where we get the eight note away minor six. So if I count from the bottom to the top. We get the eight note away minor six. If I go from the top to the bottom, we get a four note away, which is a major third. All right, so then let's go to from the sixth to the fifth. So if I go from the sixth to the fifth, boom. Now we've got uh, this one. And the fifth, I know for a Phrygian, is a seven note away perfect fifth, which is basically the norm. I can see that because if I count this way, it would just be one string down across because we're in the kink of the tuning, five notes away. There, the inverse of that uh, would be, it's a seven note away perfect fifth. The inverse of that would be 12 minus five or seven. And that's how we get to the seven note away perfect fifth. In other words, if I play from the bottom to the top, seven note away perfect fifth. But if I paid, played from the top to the bottom, the inverse would be a five note away uh, perfect fourth. Okay, so then let's go from th there to the fourth. So now I'm gonna go to the fourth. I'm measuring from this E, not this E above. You can measure from either one, but I'm going from this E now to this A. And I know that the, f that the fourth of a Phrygian is a five note away perfect fourth. I can count that by saying this is five, 10, wait, five, 10, nine, eight, seven. So there's a seven note distance between these, which would be a perfect fifth distance. 12 minus seven is five, and that's where we get the perfect fourth. So if I measured from the bottom to the top, from the A, from the, from the E to the A, that's gonna be a five note away perfect uh, fourth. If I measured from the top to the bottom, that should be a seven note away uh, perfect fifth. Seven note away, yeah, that's right. Okay, so then if I went from the fourth to the third, so now I'm going to the third, so now this shape, so, so now I have this E and then the G, uh, which normally kind of looks like a, uh, uh, a 10 note away uh, m minor seven, but because of the kink of the tuning, because between these two strings, this is gonna be, we could see it as uh, a, th a three note away. We know it's gonna be a three note away minor third if I count from the E, but if I go this way, it would be five, 
10, 9, 9 note away instead of 10 because of the kink of the tuning, 9 note away, uh, which would be a, a 9 note away uh, would be a major 6. What am I talking about? Major 6, right? So then if I go, so that means, so, so it would be a major 6. So if I went and 12 minus 9, 9 to 11, 12 is where we get the minor 3rd. So if I measure from the bottom, from the E to the G, we get a three note away minor third. If I measure from the G to the E, what did I say that was a nine note away major six, right? Five, ten, nine. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and so then we're going to go to the second, back to the second. Boom, and again, I'm comparing to this one. You can see it's the second from here, but I'm comparing to the bottom one. And so we're going to say the second is out here. Da -da. And so that's going to be at one note away, a minor second, because that's the funny interval for the Phrygian. I think it's the only mode that has a, except maybe Locrian, that has the, the, the second that's like that, the, the, the flat second. <laughs> uh, so we're going to say then, this is going to be then, if I count this, it would be 5, 10, and then 15 because of the kink of the tuning, 14, 13, uh, 10, 9. Is that right? So if I count this, it would be 5, 10, and then 15 out here, 14, 13, uh, 12, 11. So this would be an 11 note away. Uh, which would be a major 7. If I invert that, 12 minus 11 would be 1, and that's how, why if I go this way, it's a one note away minor 2nd. If I measure from the bottom, which is kind of a funny... Wait, that's not right. <laughs> I'm holding the wrong string down. Still funny. So that's a one note away minor 2nd, and then if I went from this way, that's an 11 note away, major 7, hopefully, if I have everything held down right. I think I do. And then we're back uh, to the octave. Okay, so now, let, now I'm going to go up this way and see if I can go around the horn back to here. So if I measured from this bottom bit, uh, I'd be like, okay, so, so if I'm on this part, I start here, and that's going to be, so I start at the bottom of what I call the square double stop but it's shifted up because of the kink of the tuning i'm on the bottom left because i'm in the phrygian mode and then i i go to the top of the so it goes do, 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 and then i go to the top of the what i call the double stop square because you can see it's the top up here but now i only have the top bit down here do, do, do. that repeats up top because you have to repeat ease so that repeats up here do, do, do. And then you go back to the bottom of that. Do, do, do. Do, or do, do. And that gives you here. So let's count it out then. So if I was to start here and count this out, I'd say, okay, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then that repeats four, five, six, seven, eight. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's going to be the idea when we go around the horn like that. Let's take a look at uh, the intervals from down here so I can see the shapes down here. And so we'll measure these shapes and get used to them. So we've got from the first to the second, that's going to be once again our uh, minor second. So it's a, for the Phrygian has a two note away minor second. I can clearly see that because it's only one, I mean, sorry, it's a one note away minor second. And then 12 minus one is 11. And therefore the inverse would be an 11 note away, which is a major, uh, a major seven. So if I go from the E to the F, one note away minor second, going from the F to the E, 11 note away, uh, major 7. And then if I go to the third of the Phrygian, I know that the third of the Phrygian, because it's a minor mode, 
The third defines it as a minor mode as a three note away minor minor. And I know that the inverse of a three note away minor would be 12 minus three, which would be nine. So if I go from the E to the G, that's a three note away minor third. If I went from the G to the E, that would be a nine note away, a nine note away uh, major six, nine note away major six. And then if I go to the fourth, now there's no kink in the tuning between these two. So this is back to kind of normal, the fourth being right under it. So now you've got a five note away perfect fourth, which I can see because two strings are usually five notes apart, except for these two, which are four notes apart. So that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth. The inverse of that would be 12 minus five, which would be seven. So if I go this way, that's gonna be five note away perfect fourth. If I go from A to E, seven note away perfect fifth, noting the perfect fourth and the perfect fifths are inverses of each other, and which is confusing because the perfect fourth is five notes away. So don't let that, that's confusing. Whereas <laughs> the perfect fifth is seven notes away. And so then we're gonna say, then if I go to the fifth, uh, we're gonna say the fifth happens to be as normal fifths are, both in the major and the minor. It's a seven note away perfect fifth. Looks like a power chord shape because there's no kink in the tuning down here. And we know that the fifth is uh, a seven note away perfect fifth. I can count that by saying five, six, seven. And the inverse of that would be 12 minus seven, which would be five, which would be a five note away perfect fourth. Therefore, this shape is a seven note away perfect fifth going from the B to the E, five note away perfect fourth. All right, let's go up to the next one. We're gonna say do do, and this is going to be uh, the a, a eight note away minor six. Eight note away minor six, and uh, and I can see that because if I count, this would be five, six, seven, eight. And the inverse would be twelve minus eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is four. So that would be a major third. So if I go from the E to the C, eight note away minor six from the C back to the E, four note away major third. All right, I'm gonna repeat that going up top because this line repeats up here. Instead of comparing it to this E, I'm comparing it to this E, which means now we're comparing shapes that are more than one octave apart, but I'm still thinking of them tone-wise as just being in a circle. So, so now I'm gonna look at these longer shapes and try to see if I can see those relationships measuring from here to here as my core. So now I'm gonna go from here to here that goes back, so I'm back to the fifth. So I know that, that if that's the fifth, that has to be for the Phrygian, it's a five note away, uh, I'm sorry, that's the fourth. It's a five note away perfect fourth. That's why those two get confusing because there's a five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth. Okay, and uh, what else was I going to do here? I can't count that by saying, how do I get there? Well, I, I can measure from this A, which is what we would normally do, it would be five, 10, 15, 16, because of the kink of the tune, I'm sorry, five, 10, 15, 20, because of the kink of the tuning, and then 19, and then 19 minus 12, which is basically nine minus two is seven. So this would be a, this distance, if you went from the A would be a seven note away uh, which would be a perfect fifth, which makes sense. And then 12 minus seven is how we can get to the five note away perfect fourth. So the general idea, usually we would measure from the top, the low note, but if I was measuring from the bottom note to the top, thinking of like, this is one of my roots. Whoops. That would be uh, a five note away perfect fourth. The inverse of that this way, which is more likely the way we would see it, playing the A, thinking of that as the root, is the seven note away perfect fifth. So that shape you're probably gonna see as a seven note away perfect fifth, and then reversing it, the inverse would be a five note away perfect fourth. And then if I went from here, 
and I say, okay, so now I'm looking at it from this note, and I know that that would be uh, the, the fifth, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. How can I count that? Well, if I was measuring from the B, looking at this, looking at this shape, uh, measuring from the B, then it would be five, 10, 15, 20, and then 19, 18, 17, 17 minus 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is five. And so if I was going from B to E, that would be a five note away, which would be a perfect fourth. That The inverse of that would be 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. So if I was looking at the bottom bit down here, which isn't normally what we do, but going this way, that would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. We're more likely gonna see it measured this way from the top to the bottom, which would be a five, that shape would be a five note away, uh, perfect fourth, not taking into account octaves. So then I'm gonna go, okay. And then we're gonna go to the next one and say that we have uh, the sixth and that's going to be for the Phrygian an eight note away minor six. Uh, but if I was measuring from the C, which is more likely the way we would see that shape, now it's just playing those two, which you can do finger style is an easy thing to do. If you weren't doing finger style, I've been practicing strumming. Like how can I mute to strum two notes? That's hard to do with this one. But anyways, I won't get into that now. I, I'm going to just say if I was looking at that interval then then it would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 16 minus 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is four notes away, therefore it'd be a four note away major third. And the 12 minus four would be, uh, would be where we get to our eight note away minor six. So if I was measuring from the bottom note, that's how we get to the eight note away minor six, but we're more likely seeing it from the top note, which would be a four note away minor or major fourth. Okay, makes perfect sense. And then I'm gonna go to the seventh. So the seventh here, measuring it instead of to this E, to this E down here, which I know if it's the seventh of a Phrygian has to be a 10 note away minor seventh, but if I'm measuring from the D, it would be five, 10, 15, 14, 14 minus 12, 12, 13, 14 is two notes away. So that would be a two note away uh, major second. 12 minus two is 10, and that's how we get to the 10 note away minor seven. So if, if I was measuring from the bottom to the top, E to the D, that would be a 10 note away minor seventh. If I was measuring from the top to the bottom, it would be a uh, two note away major second. All right, that's the general idea. Uh, so I guess I... Which way do you go first? Do you, do you measure from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top? Which one came first? It's like, it's like an egg or a chicken problem. And, it's, and I've heard someone say it's an egg or a chicken problem. And, and it's like, dude, that's not, how you, that's not how you say it. You know, that's not how you say it. I don't know which cosmically came first, but I know how, which comes first when you say it. And the chicken, the chicken comes first. All right. When you say when you say it, you say the chicken and the egg. You don't. No, nobody says the egg and the chicken. Nobody. No. Nobody does that. J just because we don't know which one cosmically came first does not mean you can just mess up the orders of the idioms. Dang, deconstructionist, commie, anarchist, always trying to mess up, mess up everything. You can't even. I can't even. You can't even say an idiom in the proper order these days, I tell you. I anyway. Tell me I have to reorganize my idioms. I've been saying chicken and an egg nigh on 50 years now, and I, I ain't, it's gonna stop. 
just because I don't 